Today I have with me the brand new Fiat 600 electric version 2024 and I'm here to test drive it and to give you all the feedback on how it's on the road. I'm right here in Switzerland in Rappersville at Auto Traxler. If you want to see the car, test drive the car, buy the car, check out Auto Traxler. I will leave the link in the description also on the screen. They are very nice so they will help you with all the questions you have about this Fiat 600 or any other new Fiat or old Fiat that they have here on sale. Basically this is the key, it's kind of the same key as Peugeot for example use it and why is that? Because as you probably know they are all part of Stellantis group and basically this Fiat 600 it's built on the same platform as Jeep Avenger it's built so basically it has the same battery the same electric motor and it share a lot of parts and stuff also with Peugeot E2008 that I already review if you want to see that car check it out because it's kind of built on the same platform so it's really really interesting that they share the technology they share the experience and that's super super important from my point of view I think this is the way to go to make a good quality car to share and collaborate with many other let's say cars manufacturers what you can do with the key lock and unlock the car it comes with electric folding mirrors of course keyless entrance you can lock and unlock lock the car very simple even if you don't press the buttons 18 inch wheels lovely wheels aerodynamic wheels a little bit of black with this alloy chrome look really cool on the rear brake discs and on the front ventilated brake disc otherwise the car look really nice really cute I should say also it has this orange beautiful color this is La Prima version so it's the top end version that I have with me it comes in red and La Prima red is the basis entry level version and this is La Prima is the top uh, end version the interior look lovely also it comes with those white beautiful seats but we will talk about that in a separate video I will have a full review video where you can find out more details about the car let me go inside even when you close the door the quality sound really good on the doors even though it doesn't have too much soft materials on the door basically it's plastic almost everywhere only in this area here you have this white leather but otherwise basically a lot of plastic in the car but the design look quite quite nice and also the driving feeling is nice we will see uh, today it comes also with electric adjustable seats it comes with massage on the seats lumbar adjustable uh, position electrically it looks really cool you have this La Prima here a lot of storage space here it looks very similar with Jeep Avenger these areas here also you can recognize the buttons from uh, Peugeot here it comes with three different driving modes so let me show you start the system it comes with a digital cockpit on the front and it comes with this new multimedia system and basically the software the, the graphic design is a little bit different but behind it it's kind of the same idea that it is on the new Peugeot and it's a very very good multimedia system it's pretty responsive so that's nice and also it uses this map from TomTom Tom, the same map as Peugeot use it on the latest cars and it's super responsive super super good map so from this point of view I'm nothing to complain it has a lot a lot of safety features and you can adjust a lot of things heated seats it comes also with heated windshield that's another cool stuff also the steering wheel has a very very nice touch and good quality even though it's not leather it's kind of an artificial leather the quality and the grip it's nice also I like very much this digital cockpit in the front where you can see a lot of information so from here from left and right you can change those you can see a nice graphic with what happened with energy you can see the lane assist and autopilot information you can see the power information and yeah you can see the radio and also on the right side you can see the Apple CarPlay because I already connect my phone I will set the destination on my phone and we will drive through Apple CarPlay to the destination and on the right side you can see basically the consumption that we will reset it right now so we will see also the consumption in the end of our trip here it has also a nice graphic that shows you what happened with the energy in real time if you want to go here for example to application drawer and energy you will see a nice graphic while you're driving with what happened with the energy so that's really interesting and because we have uh, connected the 
Apple CarPlay. You can see right here the trip that I will drive in and it's great that Apple CarPlay it's all over the screen and it looks great. You have physical button here to go in different shortcuts like home shortcut or like vehicle shortcut and you press it here and you go back to Apple CarPlay. Physical button for climatic system and from here you change different driving modes from parking, reverse, neutral. You have drive and B mode. B mode it's acting like regenerative brake so actually when you release the acceleration pedal will regenerate more energy into the battery a little bit powerful than in D mode you have three different driving modes eco normal and sport we will drive in all three driving modes other than that visibility wise it's quite nice this mirror here is basically the same mirror as you have it on Peugeot 2008 it's very nice mirror tiny edges good visibility outside and also a good nice uh, driving position right here I want to give you some technical data and then we will start driving so here at Auto Traxler the price of this Fiat La Prima, the top of the range version in Switzerland start at 44,190 francs with all the options included that we will talk in a review video. Here, because this car, it's kind of already a demo car, you already have a discount at Auto Traxler, so the final price will be 41,500 francs. So, pretty good price for Switzerland. On the second page, technical data, 1,643 kilograms, 16.4 kilowatt hour consumption, zero emissions, of course. The range of the car, because this is very important, 409 kilometer VLTP, around 400 kilometer. Probably in real life, you can expect around 350, 300 kilometers, 15.2 kilowatt hour, the consumption. Top speed of the car, 150 km per hour, it's limited there, 0 to 109 seconds. Power of the car, 156 horsepower, 260 newton meters. It's a front wheel drive system, that means the electric motor is installed on the front, combined with one speed automatic transmission. The battery capacity 54 kilowatt hour and usable net 51 kilowatt hour it's a lithium battery that's located below the floor the ground clearance 19.9 centimeters and the turning circle 10.5 meters it comes with independent mcpherson suspension with coil spring and anti-roll bar on the front and traverse stabilizer elastic beam on the rear ventilated brake this on the front brake this on the rear and 18 inch wheels as you saw before so let's drive it guys put it in drive and let's drive the car first of all it comes with electronic handbrake but the only downside that i find it is the fact that the car doesn't come with an auto hold function something that i definitely wish to have on the car auto hold it's super useful but i guess yeah you can get used with it because also Peugeot doesn't offer you that and also jeep avenger doesn't offer you that so they are in tone uh, on the same platform kind of the same idea it's not a big deal i mean it's not a problem to put your foot on the on the brake but yeah it's just something that can be also nicer anyway let's set this destination so you can see how nice and clear you can use this um, apple carplay for example i can use also the map of the of the navigation but i choose like that because i have a very nice place where i want to go and i want to stop there and then film the car and make a full review there and give you all the information about the car and yeah that's why I definitely choose to have it like that um, otherwise first impression it's for the first time when I drive the car and I have to tell you that it's quite light today it was first time when I drive it it feels incredible light the steering wheel in eco mode it's crazy light even lighter than Peugeot 2008 it feels also overall the car quite light and the steering it's super assisted So I'm, I'm quite impressed how assisted and how light the car it feels. Suspension seems to be pretty good over those bumps here, so I definitely like them. Not bad. Yeah, they are pretty cool. Very similar with the suspension from Peugeot E 2008. You see that? It's pretty good. And also the sound insulation from down part seems to be quite quite good quality yeah nice 
Now if I open the windows for example, you can see that here you don't have double glassing, it's normal glass. And I'm really curious at higher speeds how will be the sound insulation, but, but, at, but at low speed seems to be quite fine. Now in roundabout 10.5 meters is quite quite good so you can turn the car in small spaces without any problem. So it's quite agile. It's super agile and and nice at low speed also seems to be good insulated but we will see also a little bit later. Now if I change the driving mode let's go to sport mode. Now ooh, the acceleration pedal it's much more responsive I already feel that the brakes feel nice the steering seems to be the same light so maybe a Nah, I think it's the same yeah you don't feel any difference between sporty and eco mode maybe just a little bit slightly but basically it's not a huge difference I don't know you want to pass you don't want to pass yeah basically the steering will stay the same so it's quite light it's not a sporty car also the acceleration is not um, incredible it doesn't have incredible numbers but for city driving and also going on the let's say short trips uh, will be just fine I mean will be just great up to 300 kilometers I think you will be super super fine and also you have a little bit more space not a little bit more space than Fiat 500e electric version and it's it's quite light it has a unique driving feeling added to it even though they build it on the same platform like Jeep Avenger and um, kind of Peugeot e 2008 it is it is having a different driving feeling it feels much more assisted when you drive it it feels much more lighter so if you like to have that lighter uh, driving feeling um, you should go with this Fiat 600 because it's much more easier and lighter to drive you know so probably you know if you're a person that like the things to be easy and soft look how easy it is only with one finger it's crazy assisted so that's the difference you can make you can differentiate the cars even though they are built on the same platform they are kind of uh, different from this point of view so uh, where Peugeot E 2008 feel a little bit heavier even in steering uh, this one feel quite quite agile and light even Jeep Avenger feel quite light like this one um, It's much more similar with this one So I think if I if I remember well, it's built on the same platform as Jeep Avenger, but not the same platform as um, Peugeot E 2008 because Peugeot E 2008 it's built on the same platform as uh, internal combustion engines so that's a correction that I have to do in the video so that's why probably the E 2008 feel more heavier because it's built different than this one the only thing that they share is the the motor for sure and not sure if it's the same battery but yeah for sure the motors and many other things here for example this area on the uh, upper side and other things they share it but it's definitely built on the same platform so it has kind of the same driving feeling as uh, Jeep Avenger although it feels a little bit lighter this one but just slightly lighter not much much of a difference now the good part is that when you change the driving mode between uh, eco mode for example like we are here and you put it in sport mode the good part is that you really feel the difference in the pedal the pedals become much more sensitive and you can see when you press the acceleration it gives you the power and push you back in the seat so it's quite powerful and that's that's really good to really feel the difference between those uh, driving modes that's that's really important otherwise I'm I'm quite impressed at speed up to 60 km per hour that we drive until now the sound insulation seems to be very good and not only from upside but also from downside uh, where are also the suspensions and the tires 
it comes with winter tires by the way good visibility outside now we go a little bit higher speed and driving like 19 seems to be pretty good sound insulation also suspension wise it's fine it's pleasant it feels it feels quite nice quite light and nice to drive You can also change what you would like to see in the front there so you can see the graphic with what happened with energy in real time you can see the battery and motor and what happened with the energy you can set for example the cruise control from here you can choose to assist activate these assistance systems and once you activate the assistance system driving assistance systems you just press it up and right now the car will keep the distance will accelerate will brake and will try to keep between the lanes the car so all you have to do is just set it up from here just like that and then the car will, will just do the job for you also you can set the distance between you and the car in front and once the car is reading the lanes it will basically stay between the lanes just like that check this out and if I'm not wrong it's kind of it used kind of the same autopilot and cruise control system from Peugeot and also the same one from definitely the same one from Jeep Avenger uh, and it's pretty pretty good it warn you from time to time to put your hands on the steering wheel on the highway it's very very useful because it will accelerate it will brake depending what the car in front will do it will keep the distance so it's a great great feature to have it uh, on the car at least when it's super traffic it will take off your stress plus it adds a lot of uh, safety features so yeah from my point of view it's a super super useful uh, thing to have it on the car so again keeping the speed between the lanes it's not as good as the Tesla's one but yeah it's pretty fine it's doing the job and you can see here is not a, an auto or highway and it's still doing great at at least when the lanes are visible the system work pretty good also good visibility in the mirror up here it gives you a warning stronger and stronger if you don't put your hands on the steering wheel and then what you will have to do is just reactivate this system again until the car will see the lanes so yeah basically um, this is it and this is how it works if you press the brake you disengage and you take the control of the car but you see I drive at 80 the sound, sound insulation seems to be fine not perfect but fine maybe I should say from 1 to 10 sound insulation will be around 7 around there um, I like how they set up the car the suspension the driving feeling it's it's more set up to the comfort and not to the sportiness and that's very important basically you can see right now also in the night time how the car look in the interior the ambient light that goes across the dashboard up there you can see it on the upper side the ambient light look also pretty nice right now again activate it and the lights will turn on automatically it comes also with LED high beam and real light we will talk about that also in a separate video of course we can accelerate from 80 to 100 right here and I press the brake a little bit so deactivate the autopilot and let's see at 100 yeah seems to be fine sound insulation you don't hear too much wind from here even though the car it, it's quite aerodynamic but it has a little bit of bulky shape so even though doesn't seems to to produce too, too much air drag so the sound insulation is pretty good again very simple you have physical button on the steering wheel to activate the autopilot when you want to activate it very simple blind spot technology you can see it on the corners 
So right now the car, it stays between the lanes. It's, it's just, you can change. Yeah, look at this, it's, it's working really good right now. Uh, surprisingly good. But always have your hands on the steering wheel, guys. No matter what kind of autopilot you're, you're using from which, even from Tesla or other cars manufacturers, uh, always, always have your hands on the steering wheel for safety purpose. But yeah, I'm surprised. At least at those kind of speeds, up to 100 km per hour, the sound insulation, it's, it's quite good. Acceleration wise, it's also quite quite responsive in sport mode. The brakes feel great as well. Also, if we go in B mode, let's switch to B mode, activate this B mode. And now, when you accelerate and then when you release the acceleration pedal, the car will regenerate. And if you anticipate well the traffic, you cannot, you, you can basically use only one pedal. But what I notice is that this regenerative brake is not super powerful, so it's somewhere, I don't know, let's say in the middle. Uh, so it's not acting like a proper one pedal drive. You will basically have to press the brake in the end. So it's a great added on, it's a great feature to have it. Like you can basically use one pedal drive, you can anticipate the traffic very well but you cannot use it like one pedal drive like um, like I, I wish it was a one pedal drive here I think it was much much nicer and useful but yeah it doesn't have it so that's something to keep in mind anyway I saw that yeah, it stays also good in curves the brakes feel great uh, even this is a big curve it stays quite nice brakes are nice I like it, not bad. It has a nice setup added to the car. I think they set it up pretty nice. If you, for example, right here, you wanna accelerate from scratch. Let's see that. Yeah, it's slow, but what I appreciate, guys, what I appreciate about the car is the fact that didn't have that slip ring on the front wheels, usually, electric cars front wheel drive that are lighter and doesn't have a bigger battery usually tend to slip you know i remember i remember was i don't remember exactly what car i did drive was an electric car i think cold volt i don't remember exactly anyway chevrolet bolt i don't remember but it was one where really slipping a lot and doesn't have so good uh traction and stability it was one of the first electric cars uh, if I'm not wrong and yeah this one doesn't have that slip ring and that's I really appreciate because it has a good control so uh, you can trust the car when you're driving and this is really important so basically you go back to eco mode right now and then the acceleration is much more smoother it will give you less power if i'm not wrong when you're driving in eco mode the car gives you around 80 horsepower if you put it in normal mode it will give you around 120 or something like that if you put it in sport mode it will give you maximum power 156 horsepower so it will give you the the, the everything it's nice overall it's nice it's light it's it's pleasant to drive it and i think it's a great all-arounder probably not so good for very long distances where you have to stop and charge the battery but if you're a person that drive let's say 60 percent of the time 70 percent of the time in the city and you go from time to time in holidays and you have time to stop at supercharger or charging station or fast charging stations then um, the car is just perfect i mean if you drive most of the time let's say less than every day less than 100 kilometer then the car is just super fine yeah overall it's light you can see even if you go uphill it has plenty of power you go uphill without any problem it's so light 
this is what I like I, I love about this car um, that it's light to drive it doesn't you don't have to use too much energy to drive the car around the corners it feels light it has a nice driving position a little bit higher it has also good ground clearance nice appealing modern appealing so why not I think it's a great car also it's a very nice place around here and yeah going up so so easy you know basically I would say I would say it's incredible good for driving in the city because it's light I I want I don't know I don't think it's great if you drive high speed on the highway when it has this light steering wheel but for most of the time city driving speeds up to 120 km the car will be just perfect it's a nice add-on to Fiat legacy I should say and even if you accelerate up it pushes you back in the seat a little bit quite nice yeah over the bumps it's doing great look how beautiful it is around here man Switzerland it's it's fantastic it's amazing amazing country and it's it's pretty good also for those kind of twisty roads on the mountains and it's it's easy light to drive it goes around the corners quite sharp and nice such a beautiful place and if you're driving for example you can see right now the B mode you release the acceleration is not as powerful but it still go almost to a stop and then here you will see that you basically in the end you have to press the brake if you accelerate from 10 yeah, it's push you back in the seats a little bit and it has that nice grip but yeah overall fun to drive the brakes feel nice it's light it's nice to drive it's gripping the ground pretty well even when you go uphill accelerate quite nice Yes, it's fun to drive also on those twisty roads It's quite fun. It feels good. The grip is good. We have to drive slowly here Slowly and steady nice. I can get used with this car Definitely I can get used with it really curious to see also the consumption in the end of this trip mm -hmm. it's fantastic up here you can see the mountains full of snow nice place also there it's parking place and now we go downhill and then look at this look at the mountains man it's it's crazy beautiful and you can see the lake in the front and you can see here the mountains with a little bit of snow up there and then the green grass on the down part it's just crazy nice really and now when we go downhill the car will recuperate the energy back into the battery so that's the, the advantage you can see also the graphic right there on the screen that's the advantage of electric cars when you go downhill it will recuperate all that energy back into the battery and that's so so useful and you can see this lake here it's gorgeous I think this is a golf place where people come to play golf around here it's a lovely place Accelerate and the brakes. Quite nice. 
it's good good even the brakes feel quite good quality even when you break the press the brakes you don't feel that transition between uh, regenerative brake and uh, proper physical brakes and that's a good thing you don't feel any clutch or hear something or feel something in the pedal like I did in uh, some other cars it's it's quite good I should say it's it's quite good build definitely uh, go and test drive it because you might you might like it you have reverse camera incredible resolution on the reverse camera probably one of the best reverse camera is the same reverse camera that they use it on Jeep Avenger they use it on Peugeot the newest is Peugeot cars and you have reverse camera and you have also a side cameras on the rear so you can change it from here so you can see it a little bit brighter very very good resolution on the camera so now here it is the parking lot so anyway this is the nice place where we will film this car now let me park it and end up this video now going reverse and look at the resolution it's so easy and it's also only with one ca camera it will map up the ground and shows you what it's around the car also it comes with parking sensors uh, in the front on the rear you have yeah all that safety things electronic handbrake it doesn't have auto hold that's the only thing but otherwise very nice very light very pleasant to drive it the consumption 17.5 kilowatt hour the way we drive you saw before yeah I should say relatively fine I think if I drive even more economical it will be better now depend how you drive we still have 90% battery 340 kilometers but yeah it's nice to drive it's pleasant to drive also you can go back here to home uh, to the screen but more about that we will talk in another video I guess that was the video guys I want to go out to show you a little bit the car from outside just a little bit how beautiful it is how cute it is it's really cute it has that cute face <laughs> really really nice anyway I really hope you get some useful information from this video I think it's a nice car it's a very light feeling car so if you want an electric car that feels very light very comfortable have a relatively good price now depending which country you are in Switzerland prices are bigger but in other countries for sure prices can go even lower than this one maybe 5,000 even more but in general if you want a very light car that feels super easy to drive sharp in corners easy to park easy to drive I think this Fiat 500 might be one of the car for you so definitely go and make a test drive go and see the cars if you are in Switzerland around Switzerland check out Auto Traxler I will leave the link in the description also on the screen they are around Zurich anyway link will be there check them out uh, very nice people and also yeah you can definitely see the car test drive it or buy it thank you for watching don't forget to like share subscribe really appreciate guys don't miss out the full review with the car interior exterior all the technical data about the car will come soon on the channel and even more so stay safe thank you for watching and I guess I see you soon in the next one bye guys